Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Earthlings. I hope you're having a good day today. Um, no video yesterday because I finished putting all of the wood on the roof. I'm very p pleased to say. And it's raining today and it's going to rain tomorrow. And I've ordered my fiberglass. So uh, I won't be showing anything until it's done, hopefully. In the meantime, because it's a rainy day, it's a Sunday. Um, I like to play with this particular tool. This is Google Trends and anybody can access this tool. It's very, very useful. Uh, it's trends.google.com and you can go on there. And I'm in the explore page and you enter at the top a search term and then you can narrow down the search to a particular country or you can do worldwide and you can have a date range. You can't put custom date ranges in but uh, you can go back 2008 to present, and I'm here searching Princess Meghan. Now, as you can see in the graph, there was a lot of interest um, in Princess Meghan on 1st of January 2013. Now, this scale of 1 to a, 0 to 100 shows um, it, it's like at 1 to 10. How popular is a subject from 1 to 10? It doesn't mean 100 people necessarily or 100 million people. It just means it's a ratio. Um, so that was a really popular term. I don't know if the name Megan was really popular in 2013. And then um, in 14, there, there was zero interest in the term, search term, Princess Megan. Whereas on the 1st of January, there was 100%. So, woo, it, it went from zero to hero and so on. And then we go down the other date ranges here. It's not a particularly popular search term, but let's see where were most of the searches in the world being conducted. And I have done these kind of videos before, but this is going to dig a lot deeper. And I discovered some pretty interesting things. So Princess Meghan, you'd imagine maybe the United States would be a country. Um, lots of people love princesses. There are lots of people called Meghan, um, maybe the United Kingdom. Let's have a look at the top country. Oh, Papua New Guinea. Oh, that is a surprise. Bulgaria, number two, Kosovo, Panama and Nigeria. OK, so the United Kingdom and the United States didn't seem to, they didn't seem to make the top five. That is interesting. Let's go down. Oh, these are related topics. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, Diana, Princess of Wales, Ring jewellery, ring. I wonder who was searching about a ring. Maybe someone was trying. And you can see there's not much information on that. Now, I've got a few windows open. What I'm going to do is, is just show you on this quickly. So here we've got the country at the top for a filter. The period, you know, we, we can do the past hour, four hours, day, etc., five years. And I'm doing basically 2008 until current. You can also change the country, as I said. Um, hang on country worldwide and then they literally list every single country. I know about this tool because I've been doing marketing not only at Dolphin Safari but when we were in Brighton I had a cleaning agency. I was a one-woman band and I used to use this to find keywords. Um, right now let me explain something else which I think there is a great misapprehension about of cancel culture. Now a lot of people say oh when Elon bought Twitter he lost his top 12 advertisers. Pardon my French, fuck off. It doesn't work like that. And I'm going to explain how it actually works. Um, I ran a Google ad campaign or AdWord, as it was called in those days, back in 2009 for my little cleaning business. And I spent about a thousand pounds a year and I would bid on keywords. Now, some of you may know what that is and some don't. And I won't go into it in too much detail. But anybody, one man band, little corner shop, big conglomerate, lots of companies advertise with Google. They can advertise with Google uh, on YouTube. They can advertise on X. So Elon and Twitter, they will have had loads of little one man bands, not just like 12 big contracts or Dior, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work like that. And I'm going to demonstrate it perfectly, actually. I'm going to go to YouTube and the lovely Neil Sean. Here I'm watching one of Neil's videos. You can see it's paused. What's the photograph just below Neil's um, uh, uh, video? Oh, look. It's a picture of the dolphin safari, which is not a big conglomerate like Dior 
or Shell Oil or any of the others that Christopher Boozy and the cancel culture go on about. These advertisers shouldn't advertise with these hate, single purpose hate accounts. Doesn't work like that. Google choose it through the algorithm to give the advertiser the best result for their keyword, depending on how you have your settings in the back office. In fact, if I scan down, there's another one of Neil's videos. Another video. Another video. Oh, look, there's an advert. That's because I'm in Spain, so it's a Spanish shoe advert. Let's go down. There's a video. There's HG Tudor, Lady C. You can, GB News, you can see the people that I've got on my subscription list. Lilani. Uh, Neil again. Neil again. Neil. Oh, there's Sean. There's HG Tudor. Uh, oh, what's this? Uh, it's a Spanish advert. Uh, no War for Children. And it's sponsored by Save the Children in Spain. So do you see what I mean? It's not down... The advertiser really rarely has a choice to say, I don't want you running adverts on Yankee Wally's channel. It doesn't fucking work like that. Because someone said to me the other day, Elon lost his 12 big advertisers within the first few weeks. It doesn't, I repeat, work like that. So I hope people are beginning to understand. And I'm actually kind of new to some of these search terms with Megan. So... I've got a few other windows open. Now let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Now, this really intrigued me, and this is the meat in the sandwich. Now, I've got this on a worldwide search from 2008 to the present, but on Google Shopping. Now, let, if you look at this, you can choose to see how many people search generally on a Google web search, Generally on an image Google web search, generally on a new search, Google shopping, which personally I've never used because I don't need Google to help me find things to buy. I can just Google them, <laughs> but I accept it's a thing. Or YouTube search. So I've refined this, and this yeah, I think you'll find quite interesting, to Megan, Duchess of Sussex, under a Google shopping only. Now, what's the date of this top one here? Oops. Google, want, Google thinks I want to talk to it, and I don't. Look at that. 1st of January, 2018. That's a whopping, that is like 10 out of 10. January the 1st, 2018. Now, I want you to bear in mind, Harry and Meghan got married on the 19th of May, 2018. Five months after these searches. Now, so who was searching the title Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, before the rest of the world knew Harry was going to be given the ducal title of Sussex? And it's not just a couple of people, that is a lot of people. Let's look what countries were searching for Google shopping, merchandising, in other words, not just a general search, merchandising. We've got Ireland, Canada, Greece, Singapore. Oh, hang on. No, let's go to the top five. Oh, look at that. The top country, would you believe it, that was searching Meghan Duchess of Sussex on the 1st of January, 2018, five months before anybody knew she was going to get that title. Those Google shopping searches were performed in Lesotho. Not the United Kingdom. Not the United States of America, but Lesotho. And you can see, 99.999% of the searches were conducted there. Uh, below that, Macao. Below that, Trinidad and Tobago. Then Egypt and Bangladesh. Very surprising. I wonder how the people of Lesotho knew that Meghan was going to get the title. Well, Harry got the title and she got the Duchess bit because she married him. How did the people of Lesotho know that she was going to get that title? And were they really keen on buying merchandise with Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex? Isn't that interesting? Mmm. Very telling. And that's on a Google shopping search. Now, just to confirm, because I had to check, because I'm, you know, I've been accused of making shit up or bullshitting by certain critics. So I just thought I would look up 
um, when exactly the announcement was made. Now, here we are, Duke of Sussex, creation date, 19th of May, 2018, announced in brackets, uh, 16th July, 2018, letters patent by Elizabeth II. Now, this was a defunct title. It's not like we've had a load of Duke of Sussexes. I'm very impressed with the people of Lesotho, though. They must be really into our monarchy. I mean, big time. Who knew? So if you want to know anything about the royal family, my advice is ask a Lesothan. <laughs> it's which is I forgive me people in South Africa it's a region I believe in South Africa now the first creation of the title Duke of Sussex was in 1801 to Prince Augustus Frederick now he got married to some chick without the permission of his dad King George III otherwise nicknamed Mad King George and so they dissolved it uh, and then it was extinguished in 1840 the second creation was in 2018. The Dukedom of Sussex was recreated and granted to Prince Harry, the grandson of Queen Elizabeth II. So it's not like Duke of York, you know, which has been around forever. Um, and lots and lots of people have had it. It's not like the Prince and Princess of Wales. You know, I mean, this was like a weird one. This was a weird one. Now, I know William was offered it before he married Catherine. OK, so there's a clue in that. But he said, no, he wanted Cambridge. Maybe someone who was really keen and a super fan of Megan, uh, of uh, Catherine and William thought, read that, oh, he was offered a choice, Cambridge or Sussex, and he chose Cambridge. So if I can bag the younger ginger, chances are I'm going to be the Duchess of Sussex, which takes me back. Where's my search gone now? To Lesotho. though. There we go. God bless the people of Lesotho. though. You too can play on this. Even the sugars can play on this. That's if they're interested in facts or checking shit out. So I thought I'd leave it there. I'd love your opinions. Have any of you ever been to Lesotho? Have you, maybe if some of you live near there, you could pop in and ask someone who lives there, have you ever heard of Meghan, Duchess of Sussex? And if so, when did you find out? Was it uh, just before they got married in May 2018. Or oh, did Megan tell all the Lesothans in January 2018? Oh, yeah, there was something else I wanted to talk about while we're on the subject. Um, I There are lots of these websites you can find. Just uh, look up SEO or buying followers and you'll find lots and lots and lots of these, these websites that offer it. Um, here we go. Now, you might ask yourself, what's the point in buying a million fans, right, for Instagram, for example, because, uh, you know, that seems to be one everybody wants to buy. Now, let's have a look. Uh, here we go. Uh, 400,000 followers. I'm going to buy that for mm, $1,200. That's a bargain. $1,200. Okay, maybe I'm not that rich. Let's go for 5,000 followers. Oh, $38. That's a lot more attractive, isn't it? But I guess if you're a multimillionaires and, I don't know, maybe you've got a stupid husband who's got more money than cents, you go for the 400000 That's very cheap, isn't it? $1,200. It's easy to get started from with us. Choose from our wide range of Instagram marketing packages. Enjoy your Instagram name. Wait for results. So it's, it's as simple as that. Now, why do users buy Instagram followers? Good question. In recent years, buying Instagram followers has become common practice, especially for brands, influencers, and artists looking to increase their online presence. It gives them credibility, visibility, brand awareness. We're all familiar with that irritating term, aren't we? The top benefits of buying uh, quick and easy, cost-effective, higher engagement. Ah, here we come to the meat in the sandwich. More sponsorship opportunities. Buying Instagram followers can also help businesses and influencers appear more attractive to potential sponsors or clients. Oh, my God. So <coughs> some poor sod out there who, I don't know, has designed a shoe, who thinks, I really want a big influencer. 
goes on Instagram, top influencers. Oh my God, this pretty girl's got 10 million followers on Instagram. Hi, pretty girl. Can I advertise my shoe? I'm just a struggling little soul trader. Yeah, sure. I want $1,000 a month and I'll wear your stupid shoe. Unfortunately, the soul trader doesn't know she bought the 10 million followers, which brings me to another subject. I know I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but I think it's worth reminding everybody here Let's just have a look at a little bit of government interference. Russia funded troll farm targeting Americans run out of Africa as a non-profit front group. Now, I'm not smearing the name of the good people of Lesotho for a minute. And they're not even mentioned in this art article. But I did find one here. Uh, la, 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 la. Americans. Uh, right. It housed 16 Ghanaians pretending to be Americans, stoking racial division on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll just leave you guys with those thoughts for now. I hope you have a lovely Sunday. Try out Google Trends. See if you can find some other clues, because I think the net is definitely closing in.